We will now continue with Lesson 12, Connections Part 4, of the SDS2 Getting Started series. We will now continue with the list, starting at Forcing Connections. I'll begin by editing this member, and I want to make a couple of points before we move on to forcing a connection. I'm going to change this from that user defined to an endplate, but I'm going to leave this connection set to user. When I run this back through process, we will see that the user connection is still there. The reason why is because when a connection is set to user, the connection will become locked. Let's go ahead and remove the user, set this back to system. We now see that system generated connection with that quarter inch end plate. Now I'm going to apply an axle load. How do you apply an axle load in SDS2? Well, you're going to apply it in the tension. I'm going to place here 65 kips into the tension. Run this back through process. And one of the things that you will notice is now the connection has become a full depth connection. The reason this has occurred is because the system wants to balance that connection around the neutral axis or center of that particular member. And what we do is we're going to fill up the bolt rows. When I go back into this edit again, I'm going to open up my connection specification. Now you'll see that there's an option here which only applies when you're dealing with these axially loaded members. I'm going to go in here and change this for the expanded vertical bolt spacing to yes. What this will do is it forces the system to go through and only place the required number of bolts in that connection. As you can see, the spacing has been expanded. Well, one thing I'd like to point out is this is fine when I'm going to column flange, but in shared connections, this might make things slightly tricky. Another option that is there is to go in here and in connection spec, extend the plate to the beam flanges. Now we have to be careful here because we're actually creating a moment because we're restraining those beam flanges. Okay, enough of that. Let's go back here and move on to the forcing option. If I go into this connection and up this up to 85 kips, we will see that this connection passes with the 85 kips. It is also using a plate of 5 8 thickness. If I come in here and up this from 85 to 86 kips in tension, this will fail the connection as we can see it's actually the supporting web flange is being overstressed by the axle load meaning that the column flange cannot take the prying action on this particular member so this connection has failed not because of the actual plate thickness but it's being failed because of the column flange thickness if I force a connection it's very important to understand now I mostly use force basically to get an idea of what's going on with a connection. Um, it'll actually allow me to go ahead and see what direction it was going and even give me some material to build. But the point is this connection is failed. When you're forcing it, it takes whatever data there is available and builds this particular connection. So I'm going to go ahead and force it and we're going to see that right here the system has created an end plate but it's only a quarter inch thick. Let's go see what this is actually good for. We can see here that the outstanding leg bending stress and prying and tension is really only good for 14.7 kips. Yes, this connection has failed. Now there really is nothing I can do about the actual column flange. I can go in there and add some stiffeners to prevent some prying or I can add a plate on the face of it. The point is, is that this connection is failing. I'm going to come back up here and remove that system force and process this connection. 
and let's go ahead and lower that to the passing load. Again, generally I don't use the force that often. If I can get by by lowering the load and determining what the issue is, then I could go ahead and modify the connection accordingly. Another point that may cause this connection to pass is currently we're actually using a wide gauge. If I go ahead and change this to a narrow gauge, that B prime for the prying action will actually be less and as we can see here the connection is passed with a narrow gauge as opposed to wide gauge because the distance from the weld line to the center line of these bolts is less which reduces that bending. So in conclusion here when you force a connection you're telling the system to build the connection from where it failed. Now what I would like to point out here is that if the system was not able to do any development of that connection whatsoever, in other words there was no data for the system to build the connection, you're not even going to see any of that material. Now I mentioned about lowering the load. I just want to clarify that you don't just lower loads to get connections. I was using the option of lowering a load to determine what was wrong with the connection so I could develop it for the correct load as per the engineer's requirement. Another thing is if the engineer is giving you a sketch and you just want to get that connection and modify it, that's perfectly fine using that force option as well. It is an option. I just want to make sure that people don't see it as their only option. Finally, concerning the axle load, I only put in a tension force for an axle load. Generally, you will be putting in both a tension and compression force. I will now move on to modeling the connection, which is the last option in the connection input outline list. Now, I just want to come back a bit here. Within SDS2, you're going to want to try to use the full automation as much as possible. And as you go down through these different options, going to user, we are now moving down to the blast option which is actually modeling the connection. Sometimes you're stuck. You don't have a choice. And that's one nice thing about SDS2 is you have this full gamut going from automation to non-automation within the system. Now within the modeling connection you have two basic options. One is to use the system to develop as much of the connection as possible and then from there you'll utilize the material commands and the assemblies. Now we will discuss material and assemblies in future videos. The other option is instead of using the system to develop as much as possible, you basically build a connection from scratch, building and adding in the materials, creating the welds, adding the holes, making the cuts. This allows you to build basically anything that you need to build, especially when it comes to connections. Now what I want to focus on in this particular portion of the lesson is what happens when you use the system to go ahead and create most of the connection and then you come in and start doing your material commands which is basically like reaching in the system as I mentioned earlier and adding holes and cutting plates and adding material. Let's go ahead and run the stretch command. I'm going to go ahead and select the material that I'm going to stretch. and I'm going to create a stretch box around the area that I want to stretch on the material respond yes to the prompt using my DXDY let's go ahead and move these bolt holes up one inch and let's go ahead and delete these bolts and mark and run this back through the process this way the system will match up all the holes and all the bolts in this particular piece. Now, on this right end of this member I've performed some material operations. Let's go ahead looking at our member edit screen we notice now that the system has a check for graphical. You'll see that we have this magenta on the top indicating now that there's been a manual operation done on this particular part. When I go into my design calculations, we will now see that at the right end the system stops. It gives you a little bit of data at the right end, but it stops and does not give you any calculations of that particular design. It stops and says that graphical connection strength calculations are not generated. 
So why are the calculations not generated? Well, in this particular condition, really there's not much of an issue as long as I didn't put those bolts too close, less than the 2 and 2 thirds preferred or 3D preferred for the hole spacing. So technically, really, this should be okay. But let's say, for example, we were to perform another operation on this particular connection. And again, I'm referring to why we do not develop calculations for this particular part. Let's say, for example, I do a layout operation. Let's go ahead and select this material, which allows me to come in here and do all sorts of fun. Let's go ahead and use a free point here. Let's go and just do some fun cuts here. Go ahead and round the corners a little bit just to make it look good. Go ahead and say yes. Again, I'm going to use the system to go ahead and process to match things up a little bit here. Okay, so as we can see right here, it's kind of hard to calculate this mess. This is the reason why whenever a manual operation, that's an operation that's done outside of that member edit screen is performed, we say, hey, calcs, you're on your own. Now all this user and uh, graphical and even the force, if you've been given a design sketch and you're just following the sketch, well, then you don't really have to worry about the design. Let's go ahead and set this back to its original system design connection. Simply remove the graphical flag, go ahead and hit OK, run this back through process, and we'll see that everything has now gone back to its original position. We'll now move on to the connections part five, where I'm going to show you a little bit about moment connections.